Chet Haas from the Android Developer Relations team. Welcome to Now in Android, the second video and hopefully podcast uh, episode in this ongoing series. Once again, I'll mention that uh, I write this series of articles called Now in Android on Medium, and I'm basically trying to summarize that in video form and audio form for people to consume it uh, in other forms instead. So choose the way you want to get it and uh, go get the content wherever you like including here. So let's get on with this show. So first of all, I'd like to talk about the Android X releases that happened recently. So as I came up to writing the article, drafting the article this week, I thought, you know, not much going on, must be the holidays. There was like a couple of releases that were worth calling out, a couple of RCs, and that was about it. And then January 22nd, which is yesterday, according to when I'm recording this, all these releases hit. Apparently, they were just waiting for me to finish the draft, and then they released everything. So a lot of things came out, including a lot of library versions that went stable. So a few of those are Lifecycle View Model Save State. So this is an interesting one. It allows you to associate a view model with save state. So you already have the capability with view model to handle configuration changes. Wouldn't it be nice if you could access the save state uh, uh, approach without going through all those manual overrides and the code that you need to write to sort of retrieve the information so that your activity restarts uh, with the appropriate state that it ended with during the configuration change. So this makes that whole process a lot easier uh, with the save state handle class. Also, fragment 1.2.0 uh, went stable. Um, this brings in Fragment Container View as the container that you should use for all of your fragments. Um, it also integrates with Lifecycle View Model Save State, that thing I was just talking about above, and it fixes some timing issues that have to do with uh, on destroy view being called when there are animations and transitions running. Lifecycle 2.2. Uh, provides better integration with coroutines. Navigation 2.2 uh, provides navigation graph scoped life cycles and save state with the new nav backstack entry. It also has query parameter support for deep links uh, and improved animation support overall. And finally, coming stable recently was Work Manager 2.3. This has a couple of methods that are interesting, set progress and set foregrounds uh, APIs. These allow you to communicate uh, progress as a worker is running and also potentially launch a foreground service if that's the right thing to do to finish something that you are in the middle of and really needs to complete. Also going stable recently were some more minor releases, Activity 1.1. Uh, SQL like 2.1 and transition 1.3. There were also a few alpha libraries that uh, came out recently, including browser 1.3 went uh, alpha. So this is the first release of that version, which has minor fixes and features. And hef writer 1.1, hef, hef writer, hef, you know, it's about image file format, so maybe we're supposed to pronounce it GIF. I don't know. Uh, I'm, I'm going to call it HeafWriter. Um, so this is the capability. This library provides the capability to write Heath images, which are high efficiency image format images. So given uh, images, given the data for the images, um, one or more of those, it can write in this new format. And uh, this 1.1 release, so that was the original library's purpose. This 1.1 release offers some minor features and, and fixes on top of that. Second up today, let's talk about Android Studio. So there's a couple of preview releases that are worth checking out. So Android, Android Studio has a stable release out there, 3.5, and maybe that's the one that you're using for production development. But maybe you're also interested in checking out some of the new capabilities uh, in the preview releases, sort of get them newer, play around with them, give us feedback, uh, and integrate them as it makes sense for you, depending on what you're working on. So Android 3.6 just went RC, which is, means this thing must be going stable sometime soon. Some of the new interesting features in there that are worth checking out are the split view editor. So this allows you, before you could take a look at either the text or the design of your layout, but now you can actually see them side by side instead of having to toggle between them. Uh, so you can use that. You can get easier leak detection with the memory profiler. And you can also try out the new view binding. This is the capability that gives you uh, the, the, the capability that means that you can avoid calling find view by ID everywhere. 
Um, so sort of an easier way to access uh, and a type safe way to access uh, the IDs that are in your layout files directly in code without actually needing to manually load this thing or use one of the other approaches out there, which have other overhead and issues associated with them. So view binding is the new recommended way to do this. So check that out if you want to avoid all of that boilerplate code that we all know and hate. Android 4.0 is, uh, uh, is in beta right now. Um, and this has the motion layout visual editor. So I think I talked about this one last time. So if you've been using motion layout or have looked at that or are interested in it, it's a way of doing much richer layouts, certainly uh, much richer layout animations uh, using constraint layout uh, and the subclass of it called motion layout. But before you had to write the XML by hand, which tended to be kind of tedious. Now there's a visual editor for it, so you can use the design tool that it was developed in concert with. So that is worth checking out. Also, 4.0 has support for Jetpack Compose, the new UI toolkit that that team is working on. It is pre-alpha in development. Uh, they're developing it in the open. There are some talks about it at Android Dev Summit. You can sort of see the overview there. In fact, we just released a podcast on it that I'll mention later. Uh, but uh, if you want to actually play around with Compose and use the tutorial, then you'll need access to the tool that supports it with the appropriate uh, Kotlin compiler that knows what to do with this stuff. So check out 4.0 for that. Uh, you'll want to see the new enhanced layout inspector, uh, new capabilities there. There's a new UI for CPU profiler. Uh, so we've had the CPU profiler for some time, um, and it was certainly better than the original trace view in terms of the UI and what you could do there. But they've kept working on that, sort of fundamentally redesigned the UI to make it easier to access and understand that information, which tends to be kind of complicated. Uh, there's also a new build speed visualizer. This allows you to see where the time is going in the build. Right, so we're always working on build speed to make things better, but at the same time, you're always adding stuff to your project because that's the way software goes, right? So it's kind of nice to see whether the hiccups in build speed are coming from new annotations that you've added, uh, a new library that you're pulling in. Like, is there anything you can do on your side to make sure that you're getting the best build speed possible? So the visualizer is uh, helpful for determining that. Also, there's new templates for fragments. So the templates that we used to have sort of ignored the fragment space. And at the same time, we're telling everybody, you know what, single activity and fragment usage is kind of the recommended way to write modern Android applications. Uh, so it was kind of hard to get there if you couldn't actually start from a template. So now we give you templates, sort of gets you out of the gate a lot faster. So you can uh, write these new single activity models. You can use fragments. You can use navigation much easier uh, from the start. So check those out. There's also a new Kotlin DSL for scripting your build file. So if you wanted to use Kotlin everywhere, uh, then wouldn't it be nice if you could also use it for your build files? Well, you'll need to use 4.0 to use that so that the editor actually understands uh, the syntax that you're using in those build files. Third, we have a new article series that Florina Montanescu introduced called Kotlin Vocabulary. So this is on Medium, and the first one of those articles is out. Uh, it is called Alter Type with Type Alias. So she talks about the type alias feature of the Kotlin language and also talks about import aliases. Um, so if you think about it, type alias is essentially equivalent to, if you're coming from a C, C++ native programming background, it's equivalent to type def. You could think of it as sort of an alias for type def. Uh, it is also similar to the thing that you can do with import aliases, basically renaming things to make them more convenient or more obvious in your code. Sometimes it's not necessarily the right approach um, for what you're trying to do. Like, are you obscuring information instead of making it more obvious? Uh, anyway, the article covers all of this stuff and more, so check that out. Also, uh, she is looking for ideas for future episodes in this ongoing series. So she has a Twitter thread that she posted looking for ideas, so head over to Twitter and Florine's account there to give her some ideas if you'd like some things uh, explained in the Kotlin language. Also, we have a new code lab that Wojtek Kalachinski uh, introduced called Building a Kotlin Extensions Library. So we have this uh, extension stuff that we've been doing called Android KTX, where we introduce extensions to make Android APIs easier to use by using this nice Kotlin extension language feature. Uh, you can do this for your own code. So you can have your own extension library, not just ours. And uh, Wojtek takes you through in this code lab 
how to do that. Uh, so you can create your own extensions, create your own library. Um, also examples of how to use various Kotlin features, like there's an example of converting an existing API that uses asynchronous callbacks into one that uses Kotlin coroutines um, and either suspend functions or flow. Finally, there's some new podcast episodes out. Uh, normally, in this section of the article, I talk about the new ADB episodes. Uh, so Android Developer Backstage is the podcast uh, that I host along with Roma and Tor. And we have a new one out called ADB 131, so the 131st episode called Jetpack Compose and Declarative UIs. We sat down with Adam Powell from the Android Toolkit team and talked about Jetpack Compose and also all kinds of related stuff. So the, the point of the podcast of ADB is not to talk about how the API works, right? You can get that from the reference documentation. It's, it's more how the platform works. What's under the hood? What is the thinking and the design going into various decisions that we've made? How does this stuff uh, integrate into what you're using right now? Just all of the surrounding material to help everybody understand how Android works overall and how we can all become better Android developers because it's kind of important to understand the full stack, right? So we talked with Adam about related things like declarative programming in general, and then we got into some discussion of, you know, what does it mean to be declarative because wasn't XML declarative to begin with? And, you know, where is the logic and where is the declarative stuff? So there's this phrase we use, dynamic declarative. You can learn what that means. I did. Uh, we talk about reacting to state changes, which is one of the big things that uh, a toolkit like this needs to do. So if some state changes, wouldn't it be nice if your UI code is notified so they can automatically react to that and then repaint the UI as appropriate. We talked about data that flows through an application. So again, if state changes somewhere, how does that data actually get to where you need it? And we also talked about Kotlin DSLs, which is sort of at the heart of the syntax that they use for this new composable stuff that Jetpack Compose is all about. Also, um, not just ADB exists out there for Android developers. There's this podcast called Fragmented, which maybe you already listened to. Uh, they're now at episode 187. Fragment podca Fragmented podcast is hosted by Don Felker and Kaushik Gopal. And recently, they had a couple of people from the Android team on there. So Manuel Vivo and Sean McQuillan from my team, from the Android Developer Relations team, and they were talking about coroutines. So check out that podcast for more stuff about Kotlin and Kotlin coroutines and how all that stuff works. And then finally, uh, if you'd like to figure out what the links are to all this stuff, we're not gonna embed them in the video. That's really time consuming and hard to click on when you're just listening to it anyway. So head over to the article on Medium to check out the links and we'll put the link to that article in the video um, or just go over to the Android developers publication on Medium and look for it there. Thanks for tuning in again and I'll talk to you next time. If you like this video, go ahead and like and share, and maybe even subscribe to the Android Developers channel, then you'll get the content when we post it.